Hello everyone, I am Grandmaster Renato Quintiliano and uh, this is our theoretical coverage of round 14, the final, last round of the Feed Candidates Tournament. So it was, of course, surely a very exciting tournament and uh, we finally reached the final round, uh, which was, uh, despite we already knew the champion, it was still a very, very fighting round, very fought round with uh, many exciting games. So we had only one draw in this final round. So let's start by this game between Duda and Nepal. But as we shall see, it was not, um, it was not a, an, ev an uneventful draw without a fight, because Duda. Opened it with e4, then e5. Duda showed a great, great preparation, nice preparation in this game. Knight f3, again knight f6 by Nepo is still solid, even with the title already secured. Nepo keeps uh, the solid approach, so no Sicilian neither this time. Then d4, knight takes e4, d takes e5, and here d5 was played. If I'm not wrong, uh, this was the first time this line was played against the Petrov in the tournament because mostly of the games went knight takes e5, d6, knight f3 in this position. So, and uh, also Firuzja played c4 against Nepo. But d4, knight takes e4, d takes e5, and here d5 is the most solid. Also, bishop c5 is a funny line here uh, because the most critical variation goes bishop c4, just ignoring the threat on f2. Knight takes f2, then bishop takes f7, king takes f7, queen d5, check, king g6. Very brave move, but queen takes c5, knight takes h1. And the position looks uh, a mess, looks uh, very complicated, but uh, objectively, objectively speaking, if both sides remember everything, it's a draw. There, there are a few draws in the database in this position. So, Nepo played d5, knight bd2, and here queen d7 is an interesting sideline, which was uh, discovered by Caruana in 2018, four years ago. Uh, the concept is that... Uh, White can't play, cannot play knight takes d4 now because the queen is defended on d7. So queen takes knight d7 is already good for black. Well, already fine at least. So this is the point. The queen is defended on d7. Knight takes d2 or knight c5 are very popular here. But queen d7 is also very interesting. So bishop d3 was played by Duda. Also bishop e2 is possible. But bishop d3 has the, the goal of driving back the knight to c5 and then play bishop e2. Now Nepo continued with knight e6. This is, uh, this is the plan for black. The knight will be, at least by now, comfortable on e6, well placed. And uh, black intends to continue, continue with c5, knight c6, getting some space in the sentry. The serious game went g6. It was the game uh, Vichogov against Caruana in the Grank Chess Classic four years ago, 2018. And that game went uh, with g6, knight b3, knight e6, bishop e3, c5. Now Vichogov, Vichogov counterattacked the structure with knight g5, trying to weaken black's sentry, but b6, reinforcing the pawn, knight takes e6, f takes and a4. Um, leads to an interesting position with chances for both sides and uh, Caruana managed to win the game but it was a very interesting game so knight e6 and castles also knight f1 is possible first maneuver in the knight and uh, an interesting recent game went uh, c5 a4 knight c6 Knight e3, but here um, 
black played d4 and this was uh, a bit imprecise because after knight c4 bishop e7 castles castles knight e1 white uh, achieved a very nice game on the light squares with knight d3 bishop e g4 ideas ideas like knight d3 and bishop e g4 and also f4 f5 can be considered and the uh, white uh, got an advantage and uh, won a nice game so, but okay, Duda played in the castles, and here bishop e7. Knight f4 might look uh, interesting because the bishop is kind of trapped. White can save this bishop, but in, in that case, black has spent a lot of tempos with this knight. You know, like knight f6, knight e4, knight c5, knight e6, knight f4. It's already five moves. And the uh, six moves counting with knight takes e2. So this gives uh, this gives a huge advantage in development for white. And after knight b1, which is curious because the knight goes back to the initial square. Knight takes e2, queen takes bishop e7, rook d1 with ideas like c4 and knight c3. Uh, white already has a, a very promising initiative and the black's position is unpleasant at this point. So... It's more solid to play bishop e7. Here we can see this is a different uh, plan compared to, to the original plan by Caruana going with, to g7 with the bishop. But we will see this idea will be cons considered later. So rook e1. This was uh, a new move, but uh, also a very natural move. Castles, knight f1 c5 and here Duda played bishop d3 um, nice move this uh, the position is very fresh but Duda is nevertheless uh, has prepared some interesting ideas here because the bishop will be well placed on d3 looking for ideas against the king on on this diagonal but uh, white can also consider other moves here like Knight, knight g3, knight c6, knight f5, rook d8, vacating f8 for the bishop, more or less liking the game. Or c3, preparing bishop d3, but this is not really necessary. So bishop d3. And here Nepal played the rook d8, uh, an useful move, vacating f8 for the bishop and uh, starting to, to look for the defensive setup that black should go in these positions should aim in this position uh, c4 would be of course very bad here besides being uh, a naturally committal move after bishop f5 black is going to have problems serious problems with the dark squares and also this pawns can be can be weaknesses sometimes but okay rookie d8 and the knight g3 now something like bishop e g f5 can be answered by queen c7, knight g3, knight c6, because here black has preserved the flexibility in the sentry. This is very important. So knight g3 and uh, g6 was played by Nepal. Uh, this would be more or less necessary at some point because black intends to transfer the bishop to g7. This is the first reason. The second reason is that the f5 square can be a sensible point sometimes in black, on black's camp. So bishop f5, knight f5 can be annoying. So g6 is useful to prepare the maneuver to g7 with the dark squared bishop and also to close the diagonal and protect the f5 square. Also here, c4 can be considered this time because the bishop doesn't have, doesn't has, ha the bishop hasn't uh, uh, the good, uh, good f5 square. So it will have to go back to some something some more passive square and uh, this is this explains c3 of course preparing bishop c2 keeping the bishop on this active diagonal then knight c6 and here h4 very natural continuation of course uh, the structure on the king side makes this idea very inter interesting for white looking for and an and, and attack on the king's side, some initiative and trying to weaken um, the king, the shelter of the black king. 
So here, uh, it's important for Black to know that uh, Black needs to play for counterplay. Otherwise, it's very easy to develop White's initiative. For example, in case of passive play like Bishop f8, h5, Bishop g7, here, h6 is very strong because Black has a difficult choice here. He can, whether he can play Bishop h8, after which the Bishop will be closed will be totally out of play on age 8 and Black can end up losing the game because of this problem because he's basically like a piece down in practice in practic practice and in case of bishop f8 then knight h2 followed by queen f3 knight g4 this looks also very good for white so this counter play should be uh, prepared in the center but in case of d4 now white can block the sentry with c4 and it will be difficult for black to become active here the only way to keep fighting to keep the fight is playing knight b4 knight e4 then knight takes d3 queen takes d3 and here black has to find b5 this is the only way to activate black's position c takes b5 bishop b7 and black has some counter play here but nepo played the right move now c4 this is the right way to start the counterplay because it will be easier to advance d4 later and open the d file. Bishop, bishop c2. But here uh, he played a5, which is uh, a creative defense, but uh, it's not the the most principled continuation. The natural continuation here, very logical, is d4, opening right now the d file. And here a possible continuation could be knight e4 as after c takes d4 and knight takes looks like black is probably fine for example knight e4 knight takes c2 queen takes queen d3 exchanging queens and this looks at least safe for black and after knight e4 d3 bishop a4 a6 threatening b5 here a nice variation is knight f6 check um, bishop takes c6 queen takes first Bishop h6 looks interesting because uh, white is uh, developing strong play on the dark squares, but after b5, queen d2, bishop b7, black also has his own counter play on the diagonal. So nothing wrong here for black, and also the dark squares on the king side are uh, enough protected by now. So knight f6, bishop takes, he takes, and here b5 looks winning because black has trapped this bishop but queen d2 is a beautiful resource is a nice resource because of course b takes a4 loses to queen h6 followed by knight g5 so black has to play queen d5 queen h6 queen h5 queen takes g takes h5 bishop d1 the position looks very strange but in fact it's uh, dynamically balanced after knight c7 because the knight will be activated to d5 and uh, black has a strong passive pawn in the sentry. The bishop can go to f5 or g4. And this looks looks complicated, complex, but the engine evaluates as equal. So in practice, it could be uh, complicated for both sides. And uh, it's of course a very computer-ish line, but also very nice. So a5. And uh, the idea here is that after h5, black has rook a6. This was the idea, Nepal's idea, using the rook along the third rank to to help to defend the king side. But in fact, this position could be more dangerous for Black if Duda had found the right setup, the the best attacking setup. It's not obvious, of course, because he played Bishop e3, which looks very natural, preparing to finish the development with queen d2, rook d1, increasing the pressure in the sentry, having nice coordination, and uh, later looking for chances on the king side. But more precise here would be h takes first, h takes g6, and when h takes, queen d2. It's uh, not an obvious idea, start attacking with the queen in front of the bishop, you know, this looks, this looks of course unnatural, but it would be very dangerous for black. Because after d4 now, white has the strong response queen h6. 
And the point is that when bishop f8, the queen retreats to h2. That's why white should exchange on g6 first. Now it will be easier to coordinate white's forces. For example, bishop g7, bishop a4, very strong move. Queen c7, bishop takes. We eliminate this knight. And after c takes d4, knight takes, knight g5. And white keeps bringing the pieces to the attack. I know knight c2 here looks scary, but white also has very dangerous threats, very dangerous ideas to continue with bishop f4, knight e4, queen h7. There are many ideas here that look really dangerous for black. And uh, the engine already claims white has a decisive advantage here. Without, uh, although I know in practice it wouldn't be so simple, I guess. But bishop f8 is a, nat is a natural reply here, covering the h6 square. And here I like knight h2. This looks very natural to me, very logical move. Maneuvering this knight to g4 and uh, still increasing the pressure on the dark squares. The engine likes b3 here, trying to trying to um, reduce the strength of uh, black's queenside pawns. And also in case of b5, b takes c4, b takes c4, white can improve his position on the queen side first, like rook b1, sometimes play bishop a4. If the bishop goes to g7, also bishop a3 can be considered. So um, white can play on both sides of the board. This is this is not something simple to imagine over, over the board. It's easier to understand after the computer shows the idea. Anyway, Duda played bishop a3, bishop e3, which looks, uh, which is very logical. But now Nepo finally opened the sentry with d4. Of course, uh, a passive play is too bad for black, like bishop f8, queen d2, bishop g7, bishop h6, bishop h8, and rook a d1. White keeps improving the position and has nice chances. But after d4, c takes d4. Now, knight e takes d4 was safer, would be safer. The point is that after the move played in the game, knight c takes d4, white has knight e4. Um, this move wouldn't, wouldn't be possible in case of knight e takes d4, of course, because after knight e4, there is knight takes f3, queen takes, and knight takes e5. So this would be easier for black to, to keep the position under control. After knight c takes d4, knight e4, now white has some, some ideas on the king side, exploiting the dark squares, so the position becomes sharp. Uh, we could continue here, but I think from, for the opening stage, we have seen the most important ideas. Now the game becomes became very sharp, and uh, both players have had to play very accurately to keep the balance, but after after both sides playing good moves and finding their right their right uh, right ideas the game ended in a draw it was still a very interesting game from this point and very exciting so i recommend you to study this game because it was very very well played by by both sides so this was the only draw in the round and uh, was uh, was still a very exciting game game very interesting now moving to the wings, to the decisive games, with decisive result, results, we had two... It, it's funny, it's curious, because we had two Berlin, anti-Berlin positions, uh, with two wins for black. Uh, nevertheless, I think it's fair to say that black won the games, but not the opening battle, and uh, we will see why. So let's start by Rapport against Red Jabov. E4, E5, Knight F3, Knight C6, Bishop B5, Knight F6, D3, Bishop C5. And here, Rapport chose Bishop takes C6, D takes C6, Knight BD2. This line was also played by Caruana against Nakamura in the first round and against Firuzja in this last round, is our next game. We saw a lot of Berlin in this tournament. Uh, we didn't see no one going for the Berlin endgame. But we saw a lot of different anti-Berlin positions. This knight bd2 was played in in some, uh, if I'm not wrong, four or five games. So here Rajabov played bishop e6. Um, 
it's uh, it's in nearly impossible to explain all the <laughs> all the lines here for both sides but it's enough to say that black like, has a lot of uh, move order there's a lot of options here to choose like it's possible to play castles right now or knight d7 bishop g4 queen e7 bishop d6 queen e7 all, all of these all of these moves are playable but red job of it started with bishop e6 Six, which is the most popular, is the, the main line right now. So, castles. Uh, white also has a lot of options, of course, like knight b3, queen e2, b3, h3. Of course, the only move that uh, is not good here is knight takes e5 because of queen d4. But, okay, castles uh, threatens to take the pawn on e5. And uh, here... Red job of played bishop d6. This uh, is a typical retreat. The bishop looks more active on c5, but it was important to defend the a5 pawn. And here he is also preparing to play c5 to get more control, to get more control over the sentry. Um, also, knight d7 was played by Caruana against Rapport uh, in round 12. Two rounds ago, that game went uh, knight b3, bishop b6, knight g5, bishop takes b3, a takes b3, f6, and uh, it was also an interesting game, but eventually ended in a draw. But Rajabov played with bishop d6. Also, queen d6 has been played in some games by strong players, but bishop d6 is more, more typical. So, knight b3. Here, looks like the knight is uh, a bit awkward on b3. It may look at first sight. But in fact, this line is not uh, so harmless and was seen in two games in these candidates. b3, um, planning to develop the bishop to b2 or d4 directly are also po possible. But the idea behind knight b3 is that after c5, uh, by the way, Nakamura against Caruana in the first round played the queen e7 and when knight a5 and rook b8. This was the game he played between Caruana and the Nakamura in the first round. So Rajabov played c5 and here the idea is to play knight a5. This is the first point. Uh, this knight can be very annoying for black. It's, it's not so easy to get rid of it, to drive it back from c6, to push it back. Because, for example, after b6, knight c6 wins the pawn, the e5 pawn. So, this knight can be a bit unpleasant for black in, on a5. Here, uh, the most natural would be rook b8, more or less like the game Karan and Nakamura. But after b3, I think uh, um, Red Jabov probably discarded this position, refused to go for it and play the queen c8. I'm not sure, but maybe because he was still planning to play b6 some, at some point, so knight c6 should be avoided in that case. So I think he wanted to keep the possibility of playing b6, but I'm not sure. I don't know these positions very well, so just <laughs> imagining it. So here Rappert played b3. Uh, very normal development, the bishop goes to b2 to put pressure on e5. The, the engine indicates knight g5, the following variation, knight g5, b6, knight takes e6, queen takes, knight c4, castles b3. Uh, and it likes white's position a little, a bit more, but I think black remains very solid here. And also the exchange on e6 makes easier for black to coordinate, to accommodate his pieces and coordinate the pieces. So I think this should be should be playable. Also white has but okay white has a typical plan here which is preparing F4 at the right moment. After some preparatory moves white tries to open the king side and play for some initiative. But okay B3 is totally fine. It's very good move, very normal. And here castles was a new move by Rajabov. Also, um, I don't know if it's uh, a good novel, 
because as we shall see, white has a clear attacking plan on the king side. So this perhaps objectively speaking is a bit risky for black. Um, H6 had been played in one game, but maybe B6 here could be played right now. The point is that uh, knight c6 is not uh, so dangerous now because of bishop g4 and uh, I think even this knight can be trapped on c6, so this looks bad. And after, in case of knight c4, maybe white can, black can play right now bishop takes c4, did b takes c4, queen e6. This, uh, this needs further analysis, but looks also solid for black. And uh, another option would be b5, with the goal of preventing this knight c4. But the knight now becomes very stable on a5, so there is also some risk involved in this move. But it probably can be considered. Well, after castles, um, it seems to me that it's very easy to improve your white's position. Because bishop b2, and uh, now... Raja above played the bishop g4. Uh, knight d7 is the typical reply in, in such positions, intending to reinforce the sentry by means of f6. But now, black species are not uh, well. Black's position is not so harmonious, doesn't look harmonious, and uh, that can be exploited by means of knight g5. This is. I mean, here black has nothing better than rook e8. Knight takes e6, rook takes e6, but now knight c4. And white's position is simply better here. It's very easy to play f4. Even in the next move, like knight takes d6 and f4 or f4 first. And when e takes f4, knight takes d6. This bishop will be, will be very strong in the long diagonal. And uh, white has excellent chances of developing the initiative on the king side. So this position is probably already very annoying for black in practice. White's not even forced to trade on f6. It's possible to play knight e3, queen g4, knight f5. Ideas like this. So, white has different ways to incre increase the pressure on the king side here. To play g3 first and pre prepare f4. Too many ideas. And uh, meanwhile, black will have um, to spend some moves organi organizing his pieces in, in a solid position. But it's not so easy. So, Rajabov played the bishop g4, knight c4, and here rook e8, a4, just keeping the knight safe on c4, and bishop h5. This is the, the start of, uh, of a, a typical de defensive plan, the, this maneuver. The engine suggests knight h5 here, with a different idea in mind. After h3, bishop takes, queen takes, knight f4. Then, for example, knight f3, knight e3, f6. Then white can play g4, because the idea is to prepare, prepare g3, but this knight will go back to e6, probably. And uh, the bishop probably will also go back to f8, when white has a pleasant position with some space, but it's not so easy to break frog. Black keeps a solid position here, a solid defense. So this could be another idea. In the game, Rajabov played the bishop h5, but now queen e2, then knight d7, and queen e3. Uh, stepping out of the pin, so white is free to maneuver this knight as well. Uh, Black's idea was to play knight d7, f6, and bring the bishop back to g6 or f7 if necessary. And also keep the e5 pawn very solid. But here, after queen e2, knight d7, queen e3, it's very easy to keep improving white pieces as well. So here, um, although the position looks uh, still very typical, very normal, in fact, uh, it's already easier to play for white. So Rajab take the took the chance of bringing the queen back to d8, as I think after f6, white starts with knight h4, and the knight will be very active on f5, so he decided to, to improve the queen first. But now, 
Rapport decided to prepare play on the king side because it's it's uh, a bit obvious that Black's next move will be f6 or or in this move or I don't know in the next moves Black will play at some point f6 to bring the bishop back and uh, to protect some squares on the king side. So Rapport plays king h1, uh, already showing some intention intentions to advance the pawns on of advancing the pawns on the king side. And first he makes this prophylactic move, prophylactic move with the king. Another typical idea here is to retreat this knight to f2. And in case of f6, white plays knight takes d6, he takes in f4, trying to open the king's side. But in this position, after e takes f4, queen takes knight e5, looks like black has a solid position. It's still easier to play for white, but black remains... Uh, at least a bit solid, so it will take some some time, and also White will have to to prepare to open more lines on the king side. It's not so easy to do that. But I like King H1 because after F6, uh, Rapport's idea is Rook G1. He he aims to advance the G the G pawn to G4 G5 and the, wants to open the G file. So. This is a, an interesting idea, in fact. This is really an interesting idea. But it was not the only way to keep improving White's position. Um, a, sim a simpler path to me, very simple and good plan, would be knight h4. Just maneuvering the knight to f5. And after knight f8, for example, g3. Uh, I mean, no, I, I'm, I didn't explain right. Because... Knight, knight h4 has the goal of maneuvering this knight to f5, but also another idea is to prepare g3, followed by f4. If you can play first g3 and then f4, then the advance becomes more annoying for white, because white, ha white can't take on f4, because that would uh, open the g file. So knight e6, f4, knight d4, queen f2. And the black is clearly under pressure in this position. It's very easy to keep bringing the white pieces to the game, like rook a e1 or queen g2, preparing g4, g5, and the white continue continues improving his pieces and the op advancing on the king side. So black is clearly under pressure here. So, rook, but he played the rook g1, bishop f7. Anticipating the g4, the advance of the g pawn. Here, knight h4 was still possible, but uh, of course, uh, nobody plays rook g1 preparing knight h4. So, g4. And uh, black's position looks a bit risky here, and uh, indeed, it is risky because it's very easy to develop white's initiative. Red above played h6, g5. Is a very drastic measure against G G5 by White, but it doesn't solve his Black's problems because after H4, H6, there is the strong move Queen E2, preparing the maneuver Knight E3, Knight F5 to increase the pressure on the King side, and even after Bishop takes C4, White plays D takes C4, and when Knight F8, Knight E1, Knight G6, Knight G2. Um. Black wants to play knight f4, but that would be very risky. It would open lines decisively for, for white in white's favor. And in any case, white's playing knight e3, knight f5 at some point. Because the difference is that we can always exchange this bishop by the knight on f4. And uh, black doesn't have doesn't have the, the same option. So this is simply better for white. Maybe the best defense would be knight f8. When g5, knight g6, trying to keep the the g file blocked, but after rook g3, white has all the time to increase the pressure to play rook h1, h4, and uh, keep advancing on the king side. So after h6 here, um, I I assume that that Rappert saw a creative idea and uh, couldn't avoid going for it. Because he played the g5, which is also a typical way of uh, sacrificing one or two pawns to open lines. 
when you were trying to, when you were attacking the opponent king on g8 it's a common idea in sicilian positions for example but this was again not necessary like he could simply have played the h4 which was also interesting probably dangerous for black as well but i still like knight h4 here this seems simple and strong for white because you can simply improve the knight first and later start advancing the pawns or make some a few more preparatory moves like rook g3 rook g1 or queen e2 knight e3 i mean when white plays knight h4 knight f5 it will be very easy to keep improving white's position meanwhile black has no better option than accept a passive defense and just keep waiting trying to keep his position as solid as possible as possible on the king side but white uh, would be probably in full control of the position and uh, could have uh, um, could have made some better preparatory moves be before breaking frog on the king side but anyway g5 was played right now and here red job of played f takes g5 it's a uh, the position is not so simple for both sides. It's very easy to understand it now, it now, but over the board, it's never so easy to to find the right moves because f takes g5 was already was already wrong. H takes g5 was the right right uh, reaction because after h4, here Black has Bishop takes c4, D takes in King f7, preparing Rook h8 when the position becomes complicated for both sides. So both sides would would uh, would be with the kings in, in a, uh, a little danger here. So not not easy, of course, very complex position. But after f takes g5, then Rapport played played knight takes g5, which was also um, also a bad reply. H4 was simple and strong, just keep open the king side, and uh, it would be very unpleasant for black. But after knight takes g5, h takes g5 <laughs> again was not uh, precise. First, black had to play bishop takes c4. Because the point is that uh, when b takes c4, for example, h takes g5, rook takes bishop e7. This is a very important detail. The bishop is coming to f6, and uh, there is no compensation for white here. The attack will be easily parried, and the black is already winning. Material advantage. That is this is even material advantage for black or red. The point is that when h takes g5, rook takes, uh, things are more complicated here. The point is that if bishop takes c4, white has rook h1, an important intermediate move, avoiding bishop e7, of course. And if bishop e7 directly, there is rook takes g7, king takes, knight takes e5. With a very complicated position, uh, although the engine says it's equal, but but uh, it's definitely very complicated for me. Definitely a mess. Black is a rook, a rook up, but facing a very dangerous attack. So it's understandable that uh, Queen F6 was played here. Now the position is complicated, and uh, eventually White even had. Uh, have nice chances, but after uh, some imprecise moves, Rapport was not able to keep the, the balance. And uh, in the end, Red Jabov showed a uh, nice defensive play to emerge victorious and uh, exploit his, to consolidate the material advantage. So, yeah, it was a game with a few inaccuracies by both sides because the position was not so obvious to me. But I think it's unlikely that uh, the way Red Jabov played uh, in the opening uh, will become pop popular because it was very easy for Rapport after Bishop e b2, Bishop g4, Knight c4. This this position was very comfortable for White and it's very easy to improve White's play here as well. But in the end, Black Black won. The second Berlin in this last round was played between Caruana and Firuzja and was the same line played, actually the same variation, same ant Berlin played by Rapport against Rajabov with bishop takes e6, d takes and knight bd2. But here Firuzja played knight d7 instead of bishop e6. 
which was played by Red Jabov, and also by Nakamura against Karuana. So he played the first knight d7, already starting to reroute the knight. So castles. Karuana uh, had played knight c4 in two previous games before this game, but maybe perhaps because of this was the reason he chose castles now. But this this will also transpose to to some games played by him as white. So castles, knight c4. And here Firuja went for uh, the less exploited f6, which is very solid and very common, but it's less exploited. Uh, here, rook e8 is by far the most played, but Firuja has uh, uh, a different plan in mind for this rook, as we will see. So f6. And now Karana played the king h1, very this brings some reminiscences, some memories of uh, the previous game between Rappert and Red Jabov. But in fact, in this position, uh, Knight H4 is more popular. It's a typical maneuver, and also C3. After King H1, uh, Firuja played the Rook F7, which was a new move. But I think it's very logical because the F8 F8 square is a Typical square, a typical point for black in this po in such positions. It's always useful to improve both the bishop or the knight, both the bishop and the knight on using the f8 square. Uh, in this particular case, he wants to play bishop f8 and knight c5, knight e6. So this is a very useful move. I assume that in case of knight h4 instead of king h1, he would play rook f7 the same way. And after c3, which is very natural to grab more space in the center, in this in that case, rook e8 looks more natural because the a4 pawn can be weak sometimes. But king h1, rook f7, and here knight h4, bishop f8. Uh, now knight f5 was played directly. Also, white could try to get the same setup seen in the game report Red Jabov with b3. Knight c5, bishop b2, knight e6, and g3. Still aiming to prepare f4 here, a typical break frog, but the position uh, is not so easy. I mean, it's not so easy to, to get an initiative for white now, like in Rappert's game, because black can simply play g6, and f4 would be imprecise here, would be hasty, hasty because of b5. Knight e3, e takes f4, g takes and f5. And now black has nice counterplay. Attacking this knight, and after knight hg2, c5. The bishops, bishops come into the long diagonal, and uh, black has uh, excellent chances of counterattack here on the king's side. And in case of knight g2, we can keep improving black's position with c5. a4, bishop g7. If queen d2, I mean, if white keeps preparing the position, then it's time to play b6. And we can also, we can already develop the light squared bishop. And in case of f4, e takes f4, knight takes, because if g takes f4, f5, always, this is always met with e takes f4 and uh, followed by f5. Bishop takes g7, rook takes. Looks uh, playable for black. Looks at least okay. And if knight takes, knight g4, this seems also balanced, because black can continue developing the bishop, for example. So, yeah, Karana decided to play knight f5 directly, then knight c5, queen h5, bishop e6. Also, knight e6 was possible right now, but bishop e6, b3, queen d7, Firuja decided to to finish his development as soon as possible. And bishop e3. Also, knight c to e3 could be considered here. Maybe black can play bishop takes f5, knight takes and knight e6. This looks also balanced. Bishop e3 and the king h8. Uh, again, black could consider it, uh, giving up the light squared bishop. Bishop takes e4, b takes knight e6. This seems... I'm not an expert in these positions, but this seems playable to me. 
but Furious just played the King Gage 8, finally creating the threat of G6. Because uh, until now, Knight H6, check. But now G6 is a threat. So Karana played the Knight H4, King G8. And here, Knight e Queen E2 uh, was. I mean, Karana didn't want to repeat moves, but objectively speaking, it's difficult to come with some constructive idea for white here. Objectively speaking, the position is simply equal, simply balanced. But the game continued with Rook E8, both sides. I mean, Firuzja finally completes his development and has a very solid, very good position. A4, then B6, and the Rook G1. Maybe inspired by the idea seen in Rappert's game. I'm not sure. But uh, it has something in common, right? Because the pawn is on F6, so it considers to start with G4 and G5. But in this case, I think things are very different because Black's position is much better coordinated than Red Jabov's position in the previous game. So G3 could be considered, again, could still be considered with this idea of F4. It's very logical. Um, a possible continuation would be G6. Because always, uh, as it seems that always that white threatens to play F4, we need to be ready here to respond with F4. E takes F4, G takes, and, the, and then first B5, kicking back the knight, because after knight D2, F5, and the white can't play, can't play knight E5. So this would be the, the right reaction for black. If queen F2, queen E7 looks complex, but with chances for both sides. Yeah, the position simply a mess, right? Because white can look can go for after the a7 pawn, but then the f5 is being opened. And there there are ideas like g5, so yeah, simply very complicated. But instead, Karana played the g, rook g1, then a5, nice move, fixing the getting a solid position on the queen side and the knight d2. I, I could have, have stopped it before and uh, said that uh, the position offers chances for both sides and it's a very complicated battle, very uh, positional battle, of course. But I think this is a very critical and interesting moment, interesting moment in the game. Because here Firuzja fought for 8 minutes and uh, played f5. Uh, which is a very a very committal decision, of course, and uh, seemed a bit strange to me at first sight. But it's easy to understand when when we try to look for options and realize there is no uh, obvious uh, obvious idea for black here, because white's plan looks very looks quite simple. Karana can look for g4, g5. This would be an idea, but also he can keep bringing pieces to the king side with a rook a f1, for example. And he can always consider g4, g5 or g3, f4. Also another typical plan. So I've, I believe if Ruzja couldn't find uh, a way of continually improving his position and uh, just went for a concrete idea because that that's the normal thing when we don't see a nice positional plan, uh, satisfied, satis we are not satisfied with uh, the plans available in our position. We try to change the character character of the position and play very concretely. Because f5 is a very concrete move, but the point is that it allows white to get a comfortable advantage. He could have considered g5. This is also a committal move and I'm not sure if... Uh, um, uh, if you rejected the position because of the following variation, but this seems anyway nice for white after knight f5. After knight, if the, the knight goes back to f3, then h6 looks at least playable for black because the king side pawns are very solid and uh, keep white's play under control. But uh, there is knight f5, and bishop takes, e takes, queen takes f5, bishop takes c5, bishop takes, knight e4, bishop e7, g4. Followed by rook g3. 
And here looks like white has at least a very good compensation on the light squares of rook f1, rook g1, rook f3. And it's easy to exploit these squares, the light squares on black's camp. The right move here for black, the best continuation, was knight a6. Which is not, a, it's a, in fact a very subtle idea. But the point is that black wants to improve both the structure and the knight with knight b4, c5 and knight c6 with a very nice position. For example, g4, knight b4, knight f1, c5. And uh, g5 here is simply bad for, for white because after f takes g5, bishop takes knight c6. Um, it's easy to see that the white's plan have uh, backfired, has backfired here. The knight's coming to d4 and uh, there, there is the open f file, so black is simply much better here. And after knight f5 first, which makes sense, knight c6, f3, king h8. Black has a nice position here as well, because um, I don't see how to keep improving white's chances on the king side, how to make progress for white. It's very difficult to open lines, and that would create also serious weaknesses on white's camp. And black can always consider ideas like g6 or knight d4 at some point. It's very easy to improve black species here and uh, not easy to do the same for white. So black has a comfortable position. Probably if white doesn't uh, compromise his structure even more, the position should be okay. But definitely it's not worse for black. Definitely this is comfortable for black. On the other hand, after the move played in the game f5, now Karana gets a pleasant advantage very easily if he takes f5. Bishop takes, knight takes, queen takes, bishop takes c5, bishop takes knight e4. And uh, it's obvious to me that the e4 knight is stronger than the bishop. The knight is very strong on e4. The e5 pawn can be weak in some positions, but by now it's okay. But uh, the, the, the real problem here is that uh, the light squares are well controlled by white and uh, it's very easy to keep the control and uh, to improve white's position i would say that uh, at least it looks uh, very very hard to imagine caruana losing this game but um anyway that happened yet that happened after a long fight and uh, a few bad decisions by the american grandmaster so Firuzja took his chances of uh, generating counterplay and get some active play after imprecise play by Karana and eventually won after a long a long fight in an endgame that uh, could be saved at some points but was uh, in practice always very difficult. So that's why I said uh, the Berlin the, the Berlin gave two points for Black in this last round but. Not exactly because of the opening, but because the players with the black pieces uh, took their chances of uh, exploiting imprecise play by his opponents in inferior positions. And finally, let's see the final game of the last game of this round. It was the big clash of the day between Ding Liren and Nakamura. Because the basically this game would define the second place in the final final standings, and uh, as we know, the second place can have some importance this year if uh, Carlsen doesn't place the match at the end of the year. But who knows? So it was d4, knight f6, c4, e6, knight f3, d5, knight c3, and Nakamura was half a point ahead, ahead of Jing. So. A draw was uh, enough to secure secure second place. Then he played c5, inviting the inviting the ding to the cemetery ash, which seems a very res reasonable decision for this last round game. Ding played e3. Uh, c takes d5 is the most played, but black has at least two two very reliable lines here. C takes d4 is the most played by now, is the most popular because after queen takes d4, e takes d5, um, black has proved in many games that with correct preparation he is able to solve the opening problems and equalize. 
and the knight takes d5, which is the scimitar ash, remains uh, totally playable, totally viable, but I think Nakamura would play c takes d4 here because this line is uh, very fashionable by now. So Ding played e3, e e trying to keep the position more or less flexible. And here knight c6, uh, a6 is is an interesting line. I, I like this move because it keeps the knight flexible, but the point is that uh, now white has the option of playing c takes d5. And after e takes d5, it's likely that some isolated queen pawn positions can arise after white eventually plays d takes c5. So this also would lead to an interesting position. And in case of knight takes d5, bishop d3, we have a more or less theoretical position, but looks like a6 was kind of uh, a waste of time for black here. So not sure if this is so good, so reliable for black. But e takes d5 should be very solid, of course. But Nakamura played instead knight c6, a3, and here d takes c5, d takes c4. This is a, a very safe path, of course. A6 is most played, keeping the the symmetric position. Uh, and here white can try d takes c5, bishop takes b4, bishop a7, bishop b2. White's idea here is to continue with queen c2, rook d1, and try to get some initiative in the sentry. So this, this is probably fine, but uh, gives white some chances of playing for the initiative. And after c takes d4, e takes d4, bishop e7. This is also another option, but in recent games, c5 have caused some problems for black. Has caused some problems for black. But okay, d takes c4, b takes c4, bishop takes c4, a6. Now the game has transposed to some lines of the queen's gambit accepted. And ding, ding goes for uh, bishop d3 which is a rare continuation, not uh, not popular, less exploited, but uh, it's uh, understandable because he wants to avoid the main theoretical paths to get a playable position, to, to at least have some chances of getting a game. The most played here is castles, but after b5, uh, all bishop is retreat, retreats are possible but bishop d3 or bishop e2 look uh, don't look uh, so dangerous for black bishop e2 is the more the most active but after bishop b7 black has solved the the problems in in a very convincing way in some recent games for example queen e2 also d5 can be tried this was played by sargisian against the pregnant and ha but uh, this game was very instructive because the pregnant and the showed how to solve black's problems very well, I guess. E takes d5, knight takes, knight takes, bishop takes, bishop d6, e4, castles. Here Sargisian played b4, which is the top move uh, of the engine, according to Prag. But now c4, he didn't accept the pawn. Bishop b2, queen c7, queen c2. Threatening both queen c3 and knight g5, but bishop e7 is a very nice retreat because the bishop can be replaced on f6 in case of queen c3 and also stopping knight g5. And uh, black was fine and the uh, preg even won this game. Another option is queen e2. But now black can play c takes d4, rook d1, and here b4 which is a very forceful solution for black's position, black's opening problems. For example, a takes b4, knight takes b4, rook takes d4, queen b6, when bishop b3, bishop e7, bishop a4 check, bishop c6. This looks uh, harmless for black. And also in case of e takes d4, b takes c3, d5, um, black just gives back the piece, knight takes, rook takes, queen c7, rook d3, and here, Black shouldn't try to hold the pawn, just play bishop e7, rook takes c3, castles, bishop e3, rook a c8, and the, the position is balanced. This was played between 
Dubov and Vidit in the recent uh, Grand Prix this year, but uh, Black was fine, fine, and the game was draw. That explains why Ding goes for Bishop D3 because it's uh, a less exploited and also less studied position. And here B5 was played by Naka. Uh, it's nice that Sh Grandmaster Shankland points out that uh, maybe in this position uh, C takes D4 can be considered. It takes D4 Bishop E7 because in this particular isolated queen position the Bishop e went to D3 so Black's not, uh, there is no reason to be worried uh, about d5 as it would be in case of bishop e8 too. So this should be also good for black. And I think he's right. This position looks uh, totally fine, uh, totally playable for black. b5, now Ding plays d takes c5. With the bishop on d3, this is possible without exchanging queens. Then bishop takes c5. And uh, we have a symmetric structure. Um, in such positions, uh, maybe, I mean, when we have symmetrical structures in such positions, it's possible to play for an advantage when you have a better coordination than your opponent's pieces. Like, uh, as, we, as we will see, the knights are not exactly well placed, both knights on c3 and c6, but it would be better if white could have the knight on d2, for example, if the queen on e2 or c2, I don't know, something like that. Because then it would be very easy to develop actively with b4, bishop b2, knight b3, but that's not the case. So if you no, if you don't have better coordination than your opponent, then you have to fight for the initiative, because in symmetric structures, um, if if you one side is able to get the initiative to create threats and uh, develop active play, it, it this is usually the only only way of posing problems for your opponent because the structure is symmetric, so the pieces are more or less the same. The only thing that can break the balance is the difference of uh, activity between the pieces, and even here it's not uh, not easy to find something really active for white. So, objectively speaking, black should be doing very well here. Ding played b4, bishop e7, then castles, bishop b7, bishop b2, castles. And here, knight e4. I remember this was a typical move in such positions, because the idea is that we want to exchange one defender of the black's king and try to make use of the absence of this knight to look for attacking chances on the king's side. But here this is not possible. Uh, first, because black is already exchanging the queens. And second, because white is not uh, in time to develop all his forces in an active way, in a really aggressive way on the king's side. But still, Dingy plays this move trying to get some small pressure on black's camp. Uh, something normal like queen e2. Uh, wouldn't would not be dangerous for black like trying to prepare knight e4 without allowing exchanging queens because here there is a very nice maneuver knight b8 the knight goes back but at the same time the, at the same time white avoids knight e4 and prepares to bring the knight to d7 which is a better square for the knight in this structure because it doesn't obstruct the bishop and the, the knight can go to b6 sometimes exploiting the weak squares on the opponent's camp. So a natural line here would be rook fd1, knight bd7, rook ac1, rook c8, bishop b1, but then queen b6. And even white, if white plays something like e4, it's not easy to cause real problems for black. For example, rook fd8, e5, knight d5. Because it will be very easy to defend the king side by means of knight f8, so black is totally safe here and some exchanges are likely to happen soon. And uh, this is simply okay for black. And uh, also fine for black here is queen b1. Again, trying to avoid exchanging queens. But after h6, rook d1, queen c7. Knight e4, knight takes, bishop takes. There is a5. This is another typical way of uh, forcing exchanges on the queen side and simplifying the position for black. So black is also okay here. 
but the game went knight e4, knight takes, bishop takes, and here Nakamura chose a very concrete way of solving his problems, and uh, this, this, this is also fine, f5. Knight a5 could be considered, forcing more exchanges. I think he was maybe a little bit worried about uh, knight takes, bishop b7, knight takes and knight d4. And the white can develop some play exploiting the c6 square here, trying to, to get some pressure. But after rook c8, knight f3, queen d6, knight d6, queen c6, knight c6, queen d7. Uh, black is probably solid enough here with a queen b7 or a knight c4 coming soon. But now f5 was played. Bishop b1 was a new move. A previous game you went to bishop c2, but that uh, doesn't change the character of the position. Rook, queen takes d1, rook takes rook f d8, bishop a2 and king f7. And uh, here black is totally fine. It's fair to say that uh, Ding uh, didn't get uh, any big or clear advantage from the opening. But uh, he wants to put some pressure on black's position. So he's trying to create some problems. But objectively speaking, the, the structure is still symmetric. The weakness on e6 is not so dangerous, it's very easy to keep the pawn defended, and uh, black is already well developed, so black has basically solved the problems, the opening problems very easily. Now Ding played h4, and uh, here it was possible to keep exchanging pieces with, with rook takes d1, rook takes rook d8. This was of course possible, but Nakamura played h6. Maybe he was thinking about this endgame, rook takes d8, bishop takes knight g5. But in that case, white can, black can play bishop takes g5, h takes and knight e7. Developing nice play on the light squares like knight c8, knight b6, or bishop d5, knight c6. And black has a very solid position. After h6, now Ding played the rook dc1. Uh, taking away the offer of exchanging rooks and uh, threatening this trick. Rook takes c6, knight e5. So here bishop f6 was probably safer. Nakamura played the bishop d6. Maybe he was wor worried about uh, the invasion of the rook on c7. Bishop f6 was possible because after knight d4, for example, black can simply play knight takes d4, rook c7, king g6, bishop takes, bishop takes, e takes d4, bishop d5. And uh, it seems uh, an equal ending. So bishop d6 gave uh, white some some time, and Ding took the chance of playing rook c2 and started to apply some small pressure, which is still not enough to to get a serious advantage for white. But in practice, the position starts to look a bit more unpleasant than it was before. Not worse, but maybe not so easy to play as it would be in case of uh, rook takes d1 and rook d8 or even in case of bishop f6 and eventually after nakamura missed uh, some chances of uh, making his task easier ding got some real pressure and uh, some positional a serious position positional advantage and showed a great technique to win the game and finish in second place but yeah in the opening White's play was not so dangerous, and black. Uh, I think this plan used by Nakamura, Nakamura is uh, is uh, quite good to to equalize without problems for black. But the game continued, and eventually white won. But that was the theoretical coverage of uh, the last round of the feed candidates. Uh, I hope you have enjoyed this analysis. Uh, during the tournament, it was a very excited, exciting open, uh, exciting tournament with uh, many interesting games, many interesting opening ideas, and um, I hope you have enjoyed. And thanks for watching.